Hello, everybody. It is Mr. Odom, <clears throat> excuse me. And in this video, I am going to cover section 4.1, which is writing and graphing inequalities. As always, you'll need your pencil, composition book, or notebook paper to take notes, and a calculator. And the learning target for this video is I can write and graph inequalities, and I can use substitution to check whether a number is a solution of an inequality. And right now, all of that might be like, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what he's talking about. Hopefully, after this video, you'll understand how to write and graph inequalities and how to check whether a number is a solution of an inequality. Okay, some of you probably remember this from last year. Um, so we got to start with some definitions. So the first one, is an inequality. What is an inequality? An inequality is a mathematical sentence that compares expressions, okay? So um, it contains the symbols less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. And to write an inequality, you want to look for the following phrases in this table down here to determine where to place the inequality symbol, all right? Which one are you gonna pick? So for each symbol, instead of saying less than, it could be is fewer than. So seven is fewer than 46. So there's an example. So pause the video right here and um, come back. Oh, I'm sorry, pause the video here and write down this definition of an inequality. And I highlighted it in green. It's a mathematical sentence that compares expressions. If you're watching Edpuzzle, the video will stop now. Okay, so we're back. <clears throat> so one of the things you have to be able to do is you have to be able to write word sentences as inequality. So if I see, um, sentences written like this, I should be able to write an inequality. So the uh, first one, number one, if I want to write that as an inequality, a number x is at most. I just come up here and find is at most. It's right there. So I need to use that symbol. So a number x, which looks like that, is at most. So it's less than or equal to negative 10. And there you go. This is called an inequality versus something like this, which is called an equation, where both sides are exactly the same. They're equal to each other. And in inequality, this side, whatever is over here, is going to be less than or equal to negative 10. So x could be 0, right? No, it can't be zero. We have to look at, let's look at a number line. Okay, where does negative 10 live? It lives, let's say, over here, and zero would, let's say, be over here. So zero is not less than or equal to negative 10, but negative 37 is because negative 37 is going to be out here somewhere on this number line. Okay, negative 11 would work. Negative 10.009 would work, okay? Any number to the left of negative 10 would work. And then also negative 10 would work because we're using the symbol less than or equal to. Okay, let's look at this one. Twice a number y, what does that mean? So if y was 6 and I wanted twice the number y and y was 6, I would be talking about 12. So since it's just y, twice the number y would be 2 times whatever y is. Is more than. So is more than is right here. So I use that symbol, and I get negative 5 halves. Okay? So there you go. You'll get some practice with this in the online assignment. <clears throat> we got some more definitions. <clears throat> So a solution of an inequality is a value that makes the inequality true. So if I have, let me write down an inequality, x 
is greater than one, there's a simple one. If I wanna find a solution to this inequality, I can pick any number that's greater than one. So I could pick 77 works, that's a solution. 14 works, that's a solution. 1.9 works, that's a solution, okay? Uh, seven over three works, that's a solution. So there are a lot of solutions to inequalities. So here's the definition of that, an, a solution of an inequality. Um, and so when we think of these solutions, we think of them as being in what we call a set, a set of numbers, okay? So this set of all solutions, here's another definition for you, the set of all solutions of an inequality is called the solution set, all right? So, and you guys actually, will, there's a formal way that you'll learn how to write um, the set of all solutions of an inequality uh, with these kind of brackets. And I'm just gonna leave that for when you guys get to, I think algebra, maybe in eighth grade math. No, I think it's algebra. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video here. And if you're watching uh, Edpuzzle, it'll pause for you. So I want you to pause the video, sorry. Um, if you're not watching this in Edpuzzle um, and write down the definitions of solution of an inequality and um, solution set, right? Let me just highlight this in yellow because I think that's brighter and you'll be able to see it better, okay? So the video is going to pause now. All right, so we're back. So what did all that stuff mean? So here's my inequality. Let me just write it down here. Um, this is x plus 2 is less than or equal to negative 1. So look, all they did in the, this, this came from the textbook, is they checked. Let's see if we can find some solutions. Will negative 2 work? Well, how do you know if negative 2 works? Well, you have to substitute it into the inequality and then just do the math. Negative two plus two is zero. Is zero less than or equal to negative one? No, it's not. All right, so negative two is not a solution. What about negative three? You substitute negative three into the same inequality. You get negative one is less than or equal to negative one. So is negative three a solution? Yes, because I'm using the symbol less than or equal to. So that's good, check. What about negative four? And you can see the math down here, negative two is less than or equal to negative one, yes. So here are two solutions and you can probably find a lot more, okay? So let's move on and let's look at some of these problems where we have to determine whether a number is a solution. So here's how you show your work. For number three, um, I have x plus 12 is greater than seven. I wanna know, is negative five a solution? So I substitute negative five where I see x, and I have negative five plus 12 is greater than seven. This part right here, get my highlighter, should look familiar to you. That was chapter one, okay? So negative five plus 12, that's seven. Is seven greater than seven? Question mark above there. The answer is no, it's not greater than seven. Seven equals seven, okay? What about, um, let's look at number five. N divided by 2.5 is greater than or equal to negative three. Here's another way you might see this problem written. N divided by 2.5 is greater than or equal to negative three. So I again, I substitute. I take five, I divide it by 2.5. Is that greater than or equal to negative three? Well, what is five divided by 2.5? It is two. 
Is 2 greater than or equal to negative 3? Yes, it is. Okay, so negative 5 is a solution to this inequality and this one. I'm going to leave this one for you. So go ahead and pause the video. The blah, 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 blah. Go ahead and pause the video. And I want you to work out problem four in your composition book. If you're watching this in Edpuzzle, the video is going to pause now. Okay. So we're back. What did you get for this one? Well, let me get a, grab another color. So this one would be one minus two times five. Is that less than or equal to negative nine? So I have one minus 10. Is that less than or equal to negative nine? And one minus 10, again, that looks like chapter one stuff. That is negative nine. So is negative nine less than or equal to negative nine? Yes, it is. Why? Because it is equal. All right, so this one would also be yes. And we're happy. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about graphing inequalities. So the graph of an inequality, what does that do? A graph of an inequality shows all the solutions of the inequality on a number line. Okay, so that's the definition. Um, so for the rest of this, it says an open circle. So if I have an open circle, that's used when a number is not a solution. And then a closed circle is used when a number is a solution. An arrow to the left or right shows that the graph continues in that direction. So pause the video here if you're watching it in YouTube and write down the definition of the graph of an inequality. And if you're watching this in Edpuzzle, it will pause now so that you can write it in your composition book. All right, so the best way to talk about this definition is to actually just work out some problems. So graph the inequality on a number line. So number six, it is x is less than negative one. So in the Big Ideas textbook, in your online assignments, you're going to see, you'll see a number line on the online assignments if you had to graph this. Um, and you'll see here, they'll put zero, they'll put a bunch of marks on here, and they'll label your graph. So one, two, three, and four, and then negative one, negative two, and so on. And then what they will do, and uh, typically it'll be in blue, you'll see a circle. Oops, I don't want my marker, I want my pen, sorry. You'll see a circle and around the value in question, which is negative one. And then in the textbook, what they'll do is just draw this piece here where it says, an arrow to the left or right shows that the graph continues in that direction. If I want all the values that all the solutions that are less than negative one, then I need to go this direction. So you'll notice in big ideas that they will draw this arrow and it'll be on the number line. Okay. Do I color this circle in? Well, what does it mean? Coloring the circle in means that this value, negative one, is a solution. But my inequality says x is less than negative one. So I'm not going to color in the circle. So basically, this picture right here is a way to represent this inequality. So you can represent an inequality with a picture, all right? So let's do another one. Um, let me look at number eight. I keep grabbing a marker. I don't want a marker, it's too thick. I want my pen. There we go, grab a black one. 
So number eight is S is less than or equal to 1.4. So I draw my number line. Now, if we were in class, I would show you um, a different way to graph. And I'm going to show it to you now because you might have some teachers that show you this in the future or will want you to graph um, inequalities in this manner. So I need to find this number on this number line. So maybe it's right here. You figure that out. So this is 1.4. You're the one that figures out where 1.4 is on the number line. So I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to draw a little dot to show that I'm talking about 1.4. And I'm going to draw a circle around it. And now I'm going to deal with the inequality. So it's less than. So I'm going to go up and to the left. And I'm going to draw an arrow. And this, actually, let me draw this in a different color. He's green. I'm going to go up and to the left. And this green number line mirrors the black number line, except for it starts right here at 1.4. All right. And equals, I'm going to deal with the equals part. So for equals, I need to color in my circle. So I just shade it in a little bit. So this graph which you won't see in big ideas, but if you were in my classroom and we were working on these, this is how I would show you kind of a shorter way to graph. Notice you don't have to write all these values down. You don't have to have all these marks on your number line. You just gotta show me where zero is and the number that you're talking about, okay? So in big ideas, this graph might look like this. Here's one. 0.4. Let me get blue. Um, let me go ahead and draw a circle around this. And let me draw my arrow. And it's going to be on the number line. And it'll be colored in. And then this will be colored in. Okay, so both of those are correct. All right. So um, what I'd like you to do, you guys, I want you to pause the video, and I want you to graph these two um, inequalities on a number line in your composition book. If you're watching Edpuzzle, it will, the video will stop now. Okay, we're back. Let's look at number seven. It is Z is greater than or equal to four. So I'm going to draw my number line. Here's zero. Here is 4, and z is greater than, and it's equal to 4. If you had this problem in big ideas, there would be another number line, or no, I'm sorry, another arrow, and it would be written on the number line. There would be a circle, and it would be shaded in. Okay? So that's number 7. And number 9 you got negative one half is what is less than t. All right, so here we go. I need zero. I need um, negative one half. Maybe this is one half. And I'm going to put a dot here and a circle. And so this is negative one half is less than t. Typically, you see the variable is on the left-hand side. So in these other problems, the variable was on the left-hand side of the inequality. Over here, it's on the right-hand side. So one of the things I can do is I can move it to the left-hand side, but I have to pay attention to the inequality sign. Right now, it opens in the direction of where t is. So I need to make sure that this, that the inequality symbol that I use opens in the direction of where t is. So these two inequalities are exactly the same. So now I can go ahead and graph it, and I go this way. And again, if you were in Big Ideas um, and saw this problem, it would look like this, and there would be a blue arrow on the end, and they would write it on the number line. So long video today. Apologize for that. Apologize for all my errors. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you. And um, 
you guys feel will feel comfortable graphing inequalities. So this is Mr. Odom, and I'm going to take off for now. Have a good day.